Hello everyone, welcome to Book Club Preview. Today we're looking at a new book called Charlie Thorne and the Last Equation. And this is kind of an adventure, uh, spy um, kind of novel. And uh, it's the first one I've read from this author, and so I'm actually really excited. And today we're going to look at the prologue and chapter one. So let's jump into it. Uh, first one here is the prologue. So the pro, a prologue is a kind of story before our real story starts. And it starts with Einstein, Albert Einstein, one of the greatest minds, certainly, um, of the modern era. And, you know, perhaps even in, in all of human history. But Einstein is sick. Ugh, he's dying on bed. And usually his best friend comes and checks on him, who's a doctor, but his best friend is sick. So another doctor comes that's really young. And this doctor uh, looks at Einstein. He's like, oh, man, this, this guy's going to die. He's in a lot of pain. I need to help, um, help Einstein with his pain. I'm going to give him some pain medication. Now, Einstein's uh, kind of housekeeper is like, no, no, no. Oh, don't give me any pain medication. Don't give me any pain medication. But um, the doctor forces her out of the room and says, oh, I, I need to give him pain medication. My doctor has my job to help this guy. And she's like, no, no, don't do it. So the doctor gives him some pain medication and Einstein's body relaxes, but his heart is still beating fast. And uh, the, the nurse is crying and screaming, and finally she runs away. And uh, the doctor, the young doctor, is checking on Einstein, seeing if he's all right. But the doctor can tell that his heart is still beating fast, so his body's not relaxing. Even though his, he's kind of asleep now, his body's still not relaxing. And so he's not really sure what's going on. And then he hears this, outside. What's that? He looks outside and he sees someone running up in their pajamas. They're not even wearing shoes. They're just walking in their feet, running up the stairs. And boom, they knock down the door. And it's Einstein's uh, best friend, who was an other doctor. And, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention. This is so important. This part is so important. Before that happens, Einstein shoots up from his bed. <gasps> And his eyes are kind of looking crazy and wild. And he starts speaking German. And the doctor's like, ah, the young doctor's like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you speak English? And he speaks German again. It's like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You need to speak English. And he tries to speak. Ugh, and he dies. <laughs> All right, after he dies, then he hears the car squeal, the, the tires squeal from the car. His friend runs upstairs, Einstein's friend and kicks down the door and he sees Einstein is dead. And he's like, no, did Einstein say anything? And the young doctor's like, oh, uh, he said, I don't know. He said something in German. And the doctor grabs him by his shirt. He's like, what did he say? Tell me anything. And he's like, oh, he said, and I don't know, some kind of German word starts, excuse me, starts with a P and, uh, he doesn't know what it is. Oh man, I keep hiccuping. And uh, so the doctor's like, okay, um, well, I need you to go home. Don't report Einstein's death yet, but um, in the morning, report his death and say it was at seven. And the doctor says, no, I can't do that. That goes against um, the oath, the promise that I took to help people and to always tell the truth as a doctor and the old doctor says listen they're not my wishes they're his wishes they're dead Einstein's wishes do you want to break his wishes and the doctor's like no 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 I don't and so the uh, Ernest is his name Ernest Einstein's best friend gives the young doctor some papers and he reads it please follow my friend Ernest I trust him with everything Albert Einstein 
whoa, okay, I'll do what you say. So that doctor leaves. And now it's just Ernest alone in the room with all of these papers, equations, um, essays, documents all over Einstein's room. And he starts to light them on fire. And that's what Einstein wishes. He has this other paper and it says, um, destroy all my work because there's something really important that Einstein was working on. And if uh, some people get it, it could be really good or it could be really bad. So Ernest starts this fire and fires going through um, the chimney and he starts throwing other papers in and other documents. And as he's getting ready and he's trying to burn all of Einstein's work, some other people come. They pull up. Oh, he looks out the window. They came so quickly. He starts throwing more stuff into the fire. Boom, boom, boom. They break down the front door. Oh, Einstein said they would get here so quickly, but I didn't think it would be this fast. And he's throwing more and more and more. And then they break down the other door and they're trying to stop him. And he's throwing more, more paper into the fire and they hold them down. And then the boss goes, boom, boom, knocks him on the head. And that is how the prologue ends. Uh, so, wow, Einstein was working on something. Did it get burnt? We don't know. Who are those people? Was it the CIA? I think it was the Furies, I think what they call them. Some group that sounds bad, unless the CEA is bad, and then CEA is bad and the Furies are good. I don't know. Probably CIA is good. And then it leads us to chapter one. Chapter one starts with two characters here. Um, I think it's Carter and Dante. Okay, Carter is an older um, CIA agent, a uh, female, very wise, and Dante uh, gives her some papers and said, this is the answer to find out um, Einstein's research. And Carter looks at it and is like, what? This is a 12 year old girl. And he's like, yeah, I know. Carter's boy says, yeah, I know, uh, but we're really desperate and we need to do something new. Don Carter looks at it and says, what? This isn't desperate. This is crazy. Come on. And Dante was like, hey, look, I, I know I know it looks crazy, but we need some crazy right now because um, things are going bad and all our other projects. Hmm. Carter really thinks about this. And we we really get some insight. Carter is really respected in the CIA. And sometimes Carter pauses and thinks. And when that happens, no one disturbs her. And so finally, Carter's flipping through this file. And she's like, oh, okay, this Charlie Thorne person is really, really brilliant. This is Dante's plan, to have Charlie Thorne, this 12-year-old girl, help them unravel this Einstein mystery. <sighs> she's really brilliant but she's a troublemaker. She's gotten in trouble even with the law. And Dante's like, yeah, I know. But most genius people are brilliant and cause trouble. Oh, well, Carter says, yeah, but they don't cause trouble enough to get in trouble with the law. But Dante says, look, I know it's crazy, but we can do it. Sorry, I didn't get to finish there. Dante says, we can do it. Trust me. And Carter says, okay, you can do it, but it's off records and you only get one other agent to help you. And uh, Dante says, okay, I pick Agent Moon. And that is how the chapter ends. There was a ton of vocabulary here in, in these two chapters. Let me run through them quickly. First one is vigil. A vigil is like a prayer, like um, for a long time. Say like a late night vigil. The doctor is usually uh, watching or uh, if someone is sick and they're dying, maybe the mom is sitting there just holding their hand, waiting, um, keeping the time. So it's like waiting with seriousness or prayerfully. A uh, quirk of fate. A quirk is like uh, some kind of strange or unusual thing. Um, there, it's also a mathematical um, concept too, but a quirk is just some unusual thing. But a quirk of fate means like a unusual chance, 
um, a lucky circumstance, kind of something like that. Vehemently, passionately, I think uh, Einstein's nurse or housekeeper was like, don't give up pain medication! Really passionate. Delirium, delirium means like your mind has some drugs in it and you can't really uh, control it very easily. Actually, if you don't sleep for a long time, your brain starts to get filled with um, with waste from your body, and then you feel a little weird when you don't sleep. Sedated, um, that's when you give someone a chemical to make them make them relax. Okay, that is sedate. Lapel, that's kind of a this part of a shirt. This is a collar, but a lapel maybe has a from your chest coming out like these same things but on like a suit and uh, it's older style fashion and the doctor grabs um Ernest Dr. Ernest grabs the lapel of the young doctor <gasps> what did he say and he holds that kind of part next one here is uh andrions i'm actually not sure how to pronounce that correctly but those are, in, if you have a fireplace, usually there's like some metal bars to kind of hold the logs or to keep the logs from falling or rolling out. And uh, that's what that word means, that those metal bars or metal tool to hold the logs. Scrutinize, to look really closely. So doc, uh, CIA agent Carter is scrutinizing uh, Charlie Thorne's picture and file, trying to find some problem, some reason why she should say no. Squall. A squall is like a small storm or even like a little tornado. So if you looked outside and it's winter time and the wind is blowing and the wind blows the snow on the ground up, we kind of call that a squall. Drab means uh, not attractive. Maybe my background here is a little drab, um, not fashionable, very plain, ordinary. Chafe. Um, chafe is like a scold or to say something um, harshly. You shouldn't do that. And I believe the last one here, oh, it's cut off a little bit. Ramifications. Ramifications is the um, end result of your action or choices, the ramifications. If you don't brush your teeth, the consequence, the ramifications are you'll get cavities or have bad breath. All right, here we go, discussion question. Would you let a 12 year old go on a dangerous mission, right? CIA agent, agent Carter, agrees and lets Charlie Thorne to go if Dante can get her to. Um, but would you, would you allow that? Think of a 12 year old um, going on a dangerous mission. Of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today, but thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.